Hello everyone, my name is Mark, and I'm here with a different video. Instead of my Ajax save, I'll be going over my Borussia Dortmund save. As you can see from the title, I'm going to be going over my Golden Generation. And Merry Christmas, because it's 2028, December 25th in this current save. I decided to play through around half a season before moving on to um, making a video to see how well my Golden Generation is. So the vast majority of my golden generation is still on the youth team. Um, you can ignore some of these um, guys like Ibrahim. He is actually from Mainz. I poached him for 4 million. Paul Yazi, who's an American left back, who looks to be probably like a solid rotation player from the stats. He's pretty average. Um, you look at the report, he's 3-star guarantee, 4-star potential with 1 black star, so he might be good. Hard to say, I mean, he's unproven. But from his uh, youth team's stats, he looks to be solid. We'll quickly run through all my good players. And then Lauren Raymond, he is a, another player that I poached from St. Pauli. I paid a pretty penny for him, 25 million. Uh, he looks to be solid, very decent physicals, decent mentals, and more or less okay-ish. Um, technical ability and surprisingly he's a half decent free kick taker let's see who else we got we got Jaude Limbombe he's a French player I poached from Lyon 20 million very solid very average for, for all stats all around very good technique composure and balance he is rated to be a five-star potential four-star guaranteed but you know, with all the star stuff, it's very relative. You don't really know until he's put out there to play. So he looks to be a very solid central midfielder. Probably going to be a, looks like, deep-lying playmaker. I mean, I hope he reaches his potential. I did burn $20 million on him, so hopefully it works out. Not Golden Generation yet. Now we start off with one of my Golden Generation players. And he is having very good stat progression forward. Very average mentals. He's like across the board, very good. Tens, more or less across the board with exceptional leadership positioning. I mean, I prefer to have very solid mentals in my players. That's just personal preference. Some people don't really care that much. I mean, they care, but to me, it's very important to have solid mentals. So he has very good teamwork and bravery. Very um, average technical ability. 15 dribbling. 14 technique stands out, 15 work rate. Very good for a winger. You want him to work hard on the wings. It looks like, oh, wow, his potential dropped. All right, well, either way, two star right now. He looks to be a three and a half star guaranteed, four and a half star potential. So it doesn't like training right now. A lot of players don't like the way I set up training. He does have a problem. He lacks consistency. Hopefully this is more of like a 10, maybe less than a 10, like a 9 out of 20. So consistency, they measure the players 1 to 20. And it's a hidden stat you can't see without the editor tool. So I've used the editor tool in previous Football Manager games. That's usually how they rate a lot of uh, hidden stats, is 1 out of 20. And as you can see, his consistency is not great. So I'm hoping it's closer to a 9 than a 5, because if he's not consistent, that's going to be worrying. But all these other poor stats doesn't really matter too much. Lack of strength, you can always build that up. He's only 16. Let's see. Competitive streak, eh, I could deal with that. But yeah, he's very brave. That's very good. Uh, very solid bravery work rate, which is nice. Uh, let's see if his progression attribute-wise go all-time. As you can see, is a plus one on first touch marking. Plus one on some of the mentals. And plus one, even a plus two for balance and strength. So for the most part, he's progressing well. Now we move on. Let's see who else we got. I picked up Stanley Pistol from Nantes for 10 million. He looked to be a decent player, but probably not as good as I expected, but it's whatever. I'll see if I can figure out how to play him in my first team if it's possible. And then we have another Golden Generation player from a class of 2028. So yeah, so he came through uh, the youth intake for 2028. Now this guy was rated to be the best. 
out of my youth intake, but I have no idea how good that even means. He preferably like, plays a deep, uh, deeper role, uh, defensive midfield, compared to what I want, which is central midfield. But we can work it out. It doesn't really matter too much. So very solid mentals. He can work on his positioning and his off the ball, but for the most part, very solid mentals. Very brave. 17 out of 20. You know, solid uh, technicals, nothing really fancy. I don't really expect much from young players at uh, 16. Solid physicals, he's developing well. He's a Hungarian. Then his scout rapport, yep, five star potential. Yeah, his poor positioning, that's okay, but it's fixable. Competitive streak, I could deal with that, yeah. So, not much, I didn't really tell you much because he's so young and unproven. But I hope he can be a first team player soon because I need some reinforcements from the academy. And then we have Tom Friedrich. Friedrich? Now he's another golden generation player from 2028. His stats are all moving up. That's good. And he does play central midfield across the board. That's even better. You always like some versatility so you can play maybe like different formations instead of the usual formation. I usually run a 4-2-3-1. All right, let's look at the reports. Usual report like all the other guys. He's brave. Fairly consistent performance, a good sign. But, you know, it's not exactly perfect, but it's better than not being consistent. Lack of flair. I don't think he's that good of a dribbler, is he? Yeah, it doesn't matter. He might be more of a worker type of midfielder, not really attacking much. So lack of flair won't hurt that much. He looks pretty solid. Flair, if, I mean, if people don't know, is like the style of play they have, like their creativity. And yeah, the, the football manager explains it when I put the mouse over it. It's attribute that reflects players' natural talent for creative and the unpredictable. So yeah, generally if you want a very strong attacking player, you prefer to have higher flair so they can do tricks or somehow create something out of nothing. That's usually how it goes. But since he doesn't appear to be the attacker type, he's not very good as a ball-winning midfielder. Maybe he could play as a Cagliolero. That could be an option. So that's more of a shutter, shuttler role, as they say. You know, support. You don't really do much attacking. Well, could always play as a central midfielder. Nah, Kyle Arrow is probably better. I'll train him on that later. But since he's so young, such early training doesn't matter too much. All right, then we have Marcel Frolov. He is a left back that I picked up. I believe from Wolfsburg. Yeah, Wolfsburg. 12 million, I blew that. Unfortunately, I have tons of money in the save because I've offloaded a lot of players for big money. So plenty of surplus is put into acquiring high potential talents. This guy, the reason why I got him was because of his really extreme mentals. So he's 20 bravery, so no worries about him being a coward. 20 out of 20. Very good teamwork, 19 out of 20, and a work rate of 16 out of 20. So he's mentally very sound. Decision making composure, but these are things that grow with age, and he's 16 left back of course it's not part of my golden generation but i'm here might as well talk about my young high potential players this guy's six foot tall so i should be able to deal with any taller players and that's about it for my golden generation as you can see it's just barna friedic and tobias benz and then we can go to a Go to my senior squad here. There's my tactics. A player four two three one. All right. So the other big player I'm betting everything on is this Stephen McGarry, who is a 2028 youth intake prospect who is rated to be world class potential. And as you can see, he is rated world class potential four star out of five. But like I said before, everything is relative, so you don't really know if they're lying to your face or he is legit potential wise the game sets every player between 1 and 200 i believe messi is 195 or 198 i don't remember it's been a while but generally he is the best player in the game from my personal experience the game rarely ever creates a player that is uh, 200 out of 200 potential although i've seen it Personally, I've, uh, at least from my me recalling memories, I've seen one player that's 200 potential ability. 
that's because I had an editor tool, so I could cheat and look at all the hidden stats. But there was one guy I saw that had 200. I've seen a lot of 190s out of 200. Generally, those players are still, you know, world class, world beaters. They they should you know just light up the matches on their own. But like I said, I have no idea what this means in this game because I didn't buy the editor. So I'm hoping it's it's like 180 at worst out of 200 which is still world class but from as you can see on this screen not as um, promising as my other prospects so he's much more of a physical player he has decent acceleration agility balance pace stamina working on his strength his strength was very weak when he started can't jump gotta deal with that mentals pretty average off the balls pretty good at 15 out of 20 Technical ability, it's all on technique. Yeah, 16 technique. He does play as a left wing, or he's technically a left midfielder, but I'm playing as a left winger. As you can see from the stats, it's not amazing. He has two starts, 10 substitute appearances, four goals, one assist. 7.08 average rating. He's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination at the moment, but generally I like to play my... Um, youth prospects especially their first season I prefer to play him off the bench so as you can see he has 10 matches off the bench and he he hasn't done amazing the only game that he really destroyed them oh, I don't think you can see it I don't think you can see it oh well yeah you can't see it I, that was the first match he played I'll pull it up I believe it was this match yeah against Darmstadt he scored three goals. He had a hat trick in his in his debut. That was that was bloody amazing. That was shockingly good. I can pull it up and see if I can get this. Show everyone the greatest prospect that I've ever found, who is from New Zealand. He scored a hat trick on his debut. Nine point six average rating. He won man of the match or player of the match in this game. But let's see it. Alright, so that was pretty quick. I was just a header. I could slow it down probably. No, I can't. So yeah, he scored a, quite a few goals in the box. Uh-oh, my video's going down the toilets. Yeah, McGarry. I think I'm just playing it too quickly. I can't pause it. Can I pause it? I can't pause it. Yeah, but those were the goals. He scored them all inside the box. So he has very good potential. I mean, he has, he has okay player traits. He avoids using his weaker foot, does not dive into tackles. I mean, he has a decent right foot. He's very strong left-footed. So, I mean, I guess I could play him as an inside forward if I wanted. That'd probably really be taxing on him because his flair is so bad. That is one bad thing about him as a winger. He has horrible flair, so probably not going to be as effective. And he's injury prone, which is not great. Fairly susceptible. I mean, that practically, for all practical purposes, that means he, he's probably going to pick up a lot of injuries, which I don't particularly like, but what are you going to do? But yeah, I'm definitely interested to see if he can reach five-star potential. In terms of who they're comparing him to, in terms of the relative stats, I have two left wingers. So my main left winger is Lee Bond. He's more of a pace, high-speed player, very good finishing. Although he was primarily a striker when he started, he plays for left wing for me, and I don't really have any particular demands of him. He's just he's just there to score goals for me from the wing. I mean, it's very hard work for him, as you can see. I picked him up from Derby for on a free transfer. So in his first, first season, he did pretty well. Seven goals, eight assists from 24 matches. Half of them, around half of them, were from the bench. 11 of the 24. And then last season, he blasted 10 goals, seven assists in 16 matches. So the vast majority of them were starts, 15 out of 16. And this season, he's kind of gone into a little rut. Not exactly amazing. Just one goal, or seven appearances, six starts. But... Like I said, you know, I can always move him on within, what, uh, four years. I'll probably keep him around for a couple more years. 
And then the other guy that plays in the left wing is Daniel Braid, is German. He turns out to be quite an underwhelming player. He's probably maxed out potential wise, three stars. Yeah, he's yeah. They say he's close to full potential. I mean, they say he could still improve, but I mean, when you look at the stats, I don't see anything that he can improve. He's very fast, very mediocre all around. He's 24 years old, so in this game, generally be before the age of 24 is when the vast majority of their progression is, like as they improve. Once they reach 24, the rate of improvement is extremely slow. I mean, there are some exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, they're extremely slow. Now, for mental stats, they always go up as they age. It's just kind of slow. But generally speaking, as long as they have headroom, they can still grow their mentals as they age. Probably after 30, depending on the position they play, once they hit 30, their physical stats will go down. If, you, if they have high natural fitness, like a Cristiano Ronaldo type, generally speaking, physicals take slower degradation as they age. But he's pretty young, 24, so his physical stats are probably at their max right now. But yeah, generally speaking, I have a pretty f diverse squad, as you can see, nationality-wise. I try to have more Germans, but it's really hard to find good German players since I don't want to pay the premium to acquire them. But yeah, I have South African players, Swedish, Slovenian, and Golan. Oh yeah, this is another Academy product from 2026 he's finally in the first team now in, in 2028 so this guy's another pc player all about speed his mentals are okay i guess concentration is always poor i think this is from my personal experience in this this year's game concentration is always poor on attackers for some reason especially regens passing dribbling is his high technical ability he has decent you know first touch technique fairly balanced in terms of mentals as you can see here's his scout report agility is his best attribute he's mentally tough that's good speed yep as I said before they say he can still improve a lot he's three star right now I am worried that he's already topping out which is dan which is I won't say dangerous but disappointing that's probably a better word to put in not a long shot taker I don't really care about that He's not going to be taking many shots from outside the box, I would hope. And he's been fairly productive. Six appearances, one goal, three assists, one man of the match. 7.56 average rating. Two were off the bench and four starts. Big dribbler, 5.81 per, per 90 minutes. So Jaime Dembo, Angolan player. I've never had an Angolan player. This year has been quite fascinating with the players I've been getting off of the youth intakes. Is there any other graduates from my academy that forgot? Oh, there's Hartmann. He's a German uh, center back. Four star potential. Pretty mediocre to be honest, but since he's a academy player, I, lo I prefer to give him some op more opportunities than I normally would to a mediocre player. But mentally speaking, he's pretty solid and a little bit low on the composure, but can't have everything. You know, pretty solid technically speaking for a defender speed wise kind of slow but there's all types of center backs you can cope with having a slow one I think that's it for the graduates there is Romano I poached poached from Karlsruhe and 12 million first season in, this, in the senior team Italian player which is pretty cool Mostly a physical player, looks like very balanced mental stats and very solid technical stats. So he hasn't really done much to be honest. He he has done quite a lot of damage in two appearances, one off the bench, one starting, two assists in the Champions Cup, so that's very good. Potential wise he says he's five star, but who knows? Two and a half right now. The one thing I'm trying to get rid of is that he's fickle, which is a bad personality to have in this game. So I have him tutoring here, or not tutoring, they call it mentoring now. Let's see, he is being mentored by Bigger Michaels. This guy is very bizarre, extremely versatile player. So I play him on uh, right back because I don't have any good right backs. Very pacey, so that's very useful. 
a lot of speed. Mental wise, very balanced. Technical wise, as you can see, very poor. But I'm not really using him to be much of an attacking threat because he's nine crossing, so that's miserable. I mean, I've had, I think I've had a play with 10 before who did surprisingly a lot of damage. Generally speaking, you know, nine is pretty poor for a fullback. Is very good marking, 15 out of 20. Tackling is 15 out of 20 as well. Passing is 13, very solid. He has good technique, though. Maybe that makes up for his horrible crossing. I don't really know. I picked him up for free off of Bayern. Last season, he was killer. 17 appearances, 1 goal, 6 assists. Two men of the match awards, which is amazing for a right back. 7.42 average rating. This season, he's doing okay. 12 appearances, 3 assists. I'm not going to complain. He does a good job. Sometimes you can't be picky. If you find a good player, you know, stick with him. I mean, he's world class, allegedly. Yeah, he's world class. I don't know if he's world class as in uh, attacking wise, but he's definitely a world class fullback in terms of defense. So, an important thing to know is that he relishes big matches. So, if you have any players that relish big matches, always play him like they say in the big matches, you know, finals, semi finals, uh, continental matches as i said before great speed good technical ability in terms of pure technical ability not in terms of crossing or uh, yeah versatility wise it's strong suit for him and fairly consistent which is also good i've had quite a few players that are extremely versatile but not necessarily amazing at the particular job you would like them to be at like for example this guy crosses horribly but does it really matter at a certain point if you have a good enough attack force, you can kind of accommodate for, you know, poor crossing because he makes up for it. He's an amazing defender. I mean, he's not, you know, like 20 out of 20 marking or tackling, but you can't really expect these things, especially from a random player that you just see that another team dumped because they weren't good enough. Bayern thought he wasn't good enough. Well, you know what? I've had my share of successes from picking up players at Bayern dumps. And as Borussia Dortmund, you got to be the guy ready to seize the moment and uh, take whatever opportunity, opportunities you can get, which is eerily similar to the world that we live in. He is, let's see, I mean, he's definitely a Bayern player. Look at all the years he spent there. But yeah, he also came from Carl's Roof. So I guess this year, for some reason, they have a decent academy. My academy's been pretty garbage. So, I don't believe any of my players that I have. Let me see. Oh, no, I have Nil. He's one of my standout graduates from the academy. As you can see, all Dortmund, whole life. Now, this is bizarre. This is the first time. I mean, I've seen it before, but in terms of actually coming out of my own academy, a very solid central midfielder. So, as you can see, technical ability is pretty garbage with the exception of passing and tackling. Marking is pretty good, 14. Technique is horrible. So this guy's mostly a mental player. His mental stats are average for the most part. Some are above average, like aggression, concentration, decision-making. He's probably going to be a 20 soon. Positioning, teamwork, and work rate. So these are very important stats for central midfielders. You want to have good positioning, work rate. I play him as a ball-winning midfielder. And his physical ability is pretty solid. Not exactly the fastest guy, but what are you going to do? He runs forward a lot. That is not good. Where do you pick up that trait from? Now oh, that pisses me off. He didn't have that normally. Or I think like a couple weeks ago, he did not have that trait. Ability, decision making. He enjoys big matches, so that's very good. One poor thing about him is he's inconsistent. He's one-footed. Poor heading. Eh, what are you going to do? But yeah, as a Brazilian player, it's pretty cool to see a hard-working, defensive type. Not necessarily the cliche Brazilian player, or the stereotype. Generally speaking, uh, Brazilian players are very good at attacking. He is clearly not that type. But, like I said, he is a allegedly a world-class potential. Looks like 4.5 star, and I'm 3.5 star right now. So, he has, what, two years? Yeah, he has two more years left to develop rapidly. I don't really see much more development from him, to be honest. He slowed down quite a bit. We can go to his progression attributes all time. 
as you can see, it's quite a quite a lot of improvement. You know, a lot of at least plus twos in terms of technical ability. Huge, huge jumps in mental ability in terms of his growth. Wowie. Then physical is also huge improvements. So like I said, this guy's definitely world class potential, but the way it's moving, it looks like he's probably going to be putting more stats into his mentals and maybe his technicals. Don't know how his physicals are going to make any much more progress. A lot of the highest stats are peaking already. And then I have another guy, Keeching. So Australia has been producing a lot of good players in this save. So as you can see, his whole life was in Dortmund. I was able to send him out to the first team starting one year later after he came from the 2021 youth intake he was in the team ready to play in 2021 slash 2022 season I was thinking he was going to be a world beater but it looks like he's more of a solid player not exactly amazing in terms of production I mean he has pretty good assist numbers but not exactly a world beater he's more of a fairly productive player semi productive he's 26 already he's peaked for the most part he probably won't get any better you know, four and a half star potential world class his good flair fairly consistent he just can't jump yeah, i guess i can tell him to improve his corners i'd rather focus on something else though he plays as a center attack and midfielder that's probably going to be the only role he can play maybe he can shift him back when he gets older but so there's tons of traits gets in the opposition area gets forward whenever possible plays simple passes Curls the ball, rounds the keeper, plays one twos, tries to play his way out of trouble, and tries long range free kicks. So, the reason why he has all these weird stats is because I tutored him with, I put down the notes, Messi and, yeah, Blaze Matuidi. They both mentored him and he picked up a bunch of their traits. Kind of weird. A lot of like semi defensive, conservative traits, and then he has the attacking traits from Messi. It's a, maybe it might be the thing holding him back. A lot of good mental stats. 20 flair that stands out. It'd be nice if he did more dribbling. Hard to say, to be honest. But yeah, solid free kick taker, long shots, passing technique, and dribbling. He's been pretty productive this year. Five goals, three assists from 13 matches starting in the Bundesliga. But yeah, that rounds out about my academy players. None of these guys, besides the ones I've mentioned, are academy players. For the most part, my entire team is from other clubs that are not from my club. But for the vast majority of them, I acquired them when they were younger players. So as you can see, they all become homegrown for the most part. My clubs that I run have a lot of homegrown players, but they're technically not academy players, which is what this series is going to be all about this series is going to be about getting golden generation players through as fast as i can because it's going to be a real party but anyway don't want to drag it too long i'm pretty sure this this is a very long video it's been what 30 minutes oh wow i'll probably cut it down a bit all right thank you for watching comment below what you think about my regens these players are going to be world-class potential Anyways, thank you for watching. This is World Town FC, united to triumph.